Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the solar panels. This is a diagram of the traditional solar panel that we see on people's roofs and on rooftop installations. Basically, there's an aluminum frame, there's tempered glass, and a capsulant, which is usually um, EVA, um, ethylene vinyl ac ac acetate. Uh, this is this, it, interestingly, this is the same material that will be used in the foam bumpers of uh, the Aptera's wheel covers, except you can make them as EVA foam or you can just make it as an EVA film. And the EVA film is, is the most commonly used encapsulant and then it's on either side of the solar cells, then there's a back sheet. All right, so this is what the um, solar panels on people's roofs are made of. So there is a plastic polymer um, encapsulant in these. It's not just glass and then the solar cells and then metal. Uh, obviously this doesn't work in a car because the glass is too heavy and too brittle um, and probably too expensive and also heavy. So most of these um, when they are making solar race cars they use a different encapsulant strategy and they use this kind of uh, layer layout. So the front sheet, instead of being glass, is ETFE, uh, which is the same thing as Teflon, which is the you know nonstick coating on a lot of frying pans. You, you can make it clear, has excellent transmittance, and then EVA, and then the solar cell, then EVA, and then PET. PET is the plastic that's used in you know soda, soda bottles and water bottles. And that is the uh, layout of that. If you look at um, why you need an encapsulant, you need to do a couple of things. The encapsulant has to do a couple of functions. It has to keep gases, mainly oxygen, away from the um, solar cell because that will degrade the solar cell. And you need to keep water vapor out. So it needs to be very um, resistant to those two things. It needs to transmit UV and sol uh, sun radiation so that um, it can generate energy. It, it needs to be thermally conductive so it doesn't lock in the heat and make the solar cell overheat. Um, and then you need to electrically isolate it. So this is, uh, that's a figure from this paper talking about the advanced polymer encapsulates for photovoltaic devices. And here um, we can see what are the things that this encapsulate needs to do. So it needs to provide structural support. Uh, it needs to be easy to process and have be inert. It does. You can't have it react with either the front sheet or the back sheet or the solar um, uh, panel. So you need something inert. Uh, it has to be compatible with the cells and isolate them from degrading factors. You need to ha have it transmit light. Um, uh, you need to have it so that it doesn't. It, you reduce potential induced degradation. And you need to have it um, provide good electrical insulation between the PV cells and the, the things around it. Um, there's several materials, and like we talked about, the most common encapsulant is EVA. There is another company called Borealis. They make a polypropylene-based um, encapsulant and back sheet. And they claim that there's many advantages to it. And I, I'm guessing from the video that Aptera put out, they, they did so many iterations and so many different combinations. So I'm guessing they've tried all these different combinations. They tried EVA. You can also, um, there are um, polyurethane-based uh, encapsulants, epoxy-based enca encapsulants, and several others. Um, so I'm guessing they tried most of the ones that are commercially available and saw which one gave them the best um, performance. And like, you know, like we saw in the video, they're testing it for thermal stability, sp stability from 85 degrees Celsius down to negative 40 degrees Celsius. They're doing water intrusion, thermal cycling, um, and they did a lot of structural testing by shooting hail and steel balls at it and things like that. So the, the, this encapsulant needs to um, basically protect the cells from all those things. And um, they've probably tried this polypropylene um, and they've tried the um, EVA encapsulant. They've, they've probably tried polyurethane, epoxy, all those things. My guess is that they are going to go with the standard um, uh, standard layup, which is ETFE. So Teflon, it's really good because high transmittance, it, it's very slippery, so it stays clean very easily. 
Uh, and then this is just the this is just the standard. EVA is the standard. Like 99% of the solar panels out there are encapsulated in EVA, so we have a long history um, of performance with that. So I'm I'm guessing they're going to stick with it. Maybe they'll go with this polypropylene thing that this company makes because that's the only other commercially available one I saw. But um, my guess is this is what they're going with. Uh, this is fairly standard. I'm very interested to, you know, if they ever put it out, what their encapsulation strategy is and what all, what all things they tried. I'll try to, um, if I ever go visit that facility, I'll try to see if I can get some information. It's probably proprietary information and they probably have a patent in on their encapsulation strategy if it's somewhat, if it's significantly different than this, which is the standard. Um, but it's good to know, like, based on that previous video, they had like 29 different um, panels up there. So they've, and, and I'm guessing they've tried hundreds before they made the full panels. Um, so they've tried many different encapsulation strategies. And um, it looks like they have all the testing equipment. So I'm pretty happy about the process, uh, the process that I saw of how they were building their solar panels. So I think their solar panels are going to be pretty good. And they may have some good um, IT from that. Um, IP rather. And uh, maybe they, as uh, solar vehicles... Um, expands, uh, they can sell their IP to other companies. Really curious as to what like Sono and Lightyear have been doing. Uh, maybe they're different. This, this is one of the things that I wish that they would have kind of collaborated with other companies for because, you know, maybe they both came to the same solution. They wouldn't have to spend all this time figuring that out because the um, uh, the engineering parameters that they have are the same as Sono and Lightyear. You know, they both want automotive grade solar panels and uh, they were both trying to figure out the best encapsulation strategy for it. So um, if they shared work, that probably would have saved a lot of them um, some time and some money uh, in designing these things. Okay, well, I uh, hope that was a little bit helpful in understanding what exactly they were testing um, I was curious when I saw the video, like, what exactly are they testing? And I think they were testing this encapsulant material and the front sheet and the back sheet and figuring out which combination works the best for them. And um, and so I just read these things to figure that out for myself. So if you guys are interested, hopefully this video helps you out a little bit. Um, any comments, we welcome them below. And if you know more about it, please uh, educate us in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks to our... Um, supporting members and have a great day everyone.